Now, how do you like the sound of having the lowest energy bills in Europe? Well, that's no pipe dream, according to the founder of Octopus Energy. Greg Jackson reckons Scottish consumers would see huge savings if prices were based on how much power is generated where we live. A load of other countries do the same. Uh, and essentially, you break the country up into zones. And instead of the electricity price being set by the most expensive electricity in the whole nation, you base it on local supply and demand. And what it would mean, particularly for Scotland, is that you know, with a lot of renewable generation, Scottish prices would uh, yeah, be cut very significantly from where they are now. Well, Cal McKeever is from Strathclyde University and is an expert on these issues. I asked him if shaking up energy charging could really work. Yeah, so the first thing to say about this uh, move to, potential move to zonal pricing is that it's well, a very hotly contested topic in the energy sector and it's really splitting the industry down the middle a little bit because um, we've been th talking about this for three years now, um, the government been considering it and they still haven't come to a decision. And one of the main reasons is that there are really good arguments on both sides of the debate really as to whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. So um, as Octopus might outline, there are potential for lower prices in regions that have potentially an oversupply of renewable energy, which is low cost at the point you use it, compared to the amount of transmission you have to uh, get that to the demand centres that you have. So Scotland might be one of those regions at present, um, because we lag behind a little bit on the, the amount of transmission that we've uh, been able to build out in the last 10 years, say, relative to the amount of renewables that we've built out. Um, on the other side of the ledger, you've got generation companies who are worried that this might introduce uh, additional risks on their business and uh, might reduce the revenues that they can get with at the same time as government are relying on them to build out um, huge amounts of investment over the next decade to meet clean power targets for um, you know the government's manifesto commitment to deliver a clean power system um, you're introducing this really fundamental change to the energy system and they think that will potentially increase their cost of delivering that so in theory then could this you geographical way of doing things be set up quite easily? Uh, definitely not easily. You're looking at at least a five-year programme of, right. of uh, I've a transition to this, so it's definitely not an overnight fix. Uh, there are lots of logistical challenges to get in place as to how this would work. The level of protections you provide, for example, to existing generators who've been built on the premise of a market that is now changing. Um, and there's lots of political decisions to be made about it as well um, relating to how consumers like us might be exposed to the prices or not because there are different ways that you could deliver zonal pricing and they haven't really decided which, which route they would take. Do you think this will ever happen then? Because it seems like apart from Greg Jackson, the, the energy industry is, is overwhelmingly opposed at the moment. It could happen. Uh, there are government, there are elements of government seem to be quite keen on it. But as I say, it's not going to happen overnight. There is lots of opposition to it. I'm glad I'm not the one that's making the decision because it is very complex. Um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly not something that's going to be happening before 2030 anyway. OK, well, thank you very much for joining us on The Seven tonight and explaining it for us all. No problem. Thanks for having me.